We're basking here in the sun in Barcelona. It's the day before the start of the three-day Furisia FEI Nations Cup final. The first time there's ever been a final in this wonderful team competition. We've got 18 teams competing here this weekend. Steve, the atmosphere is already building. It's amazing, you know, you can sense it, you can feel it, you can look at the riders and you can see how focused they are at the moment. OK, you know, it's a serious business at the best of times, but you can look at riders walking about here. They've been preparing their horses today. Tomorrow is the start of what is going to be the biggest event in show jumping ever. Two million euros on the table this weekend. It's a phenomenal amount of money. Phenomenal, you know, and I mean, it isn't half going to motivate everybody. <laughs> they, look, they look motivated, as you say, walking around here. Let's just look at the three days, because the 18 teams come forward tomorrow for what basically is the first round, but the qualifying round. And it's vital, because the top eight of those 18 teams go forward to the grand finale on Sunday. The 10 teams, they go through on Saturday to a consolation final, also with big prize money. But Steve, we've got 18 teams global this time in the Nations Cup. Can you pick out one or two that might just be knocking at the door? Well, a lot more than one or two, Phil, you know. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a three days that is absolutely loaded with talent. The best in the world is here. We always knew that. We've been promising the whole world this all summer. Now they're going to deliver, and I think they will. You know, let's look at one or two of them. I mean, you'd have to say that on paper, Great Britain would be as, as big a favourite as anybody, you know. They won an Olympic Games last July, 14 months later they won a European Championship. They've got the same team, virtually, as they had in Herning a month ago. Scott Brash, he rides Ursula, not Hallo Sanctos. William Tonner rides Billy Congo again. Ben Mayer rides Triple X and not Cella. Um, Michael Whittaker, he'll ride Viking, and the fifth member, a very talented young lady, Louise Saywell. Let me pick you up on that, Steve, because that's also an innovation. Five riders Absolutely. in the teams. Tell us why that is. Well, normally in a Nations Cup, you have five riders, they pick out four, there's a fifth member that doesn't get a go. This time, if the chef to keep thought so, they can bring in the fifth member on the last day. If it gets to a jump-off competition, it's going to get very exciting. They can bring in a fresh, fresh horse altogether. And, I mean, that adds another lovely angle to it, doesn't well, it? Well, there's so many new angles about this whole Furacea system that I think it's just wonderful. It's a breath of fresh air for show jumping. Not just about the money, but the way they're running it. You know, it's something different to talk about, something different to aim at. Innovation. Innovation, yeah. What about the Netherlands? I think, you know, on form, you'd have to say that Britain were just about shaded as, um, as favourites. But, you know, there are a lot of other very good teams. I think my second two favourites, really, would be the Netherlands and Switzerland. I know that's a, they're old chestnuts. They're always there or thereabouts. But they've got two teams there that are absolutely packed with clear round jumpers. If you look at the Netherlands, Olympic champion in uh, 2000, Jerome Doubledam, Willem Graver on an absolutely brilliant horse. Harry Smallis is on fire at the moment. Van der Vluten, the young boy, Michael, on Verdi, jumps an awful lot of clear rounds, as does Jurv Reiling on Boobaloo. Moving on to Switzerland, four absolute world-class riders. Paul Astemann, Castlefield Eclipse, jumps a lot of clear rounds, that mare. Steve Gerdat, Olympic champion, we all know that. Viet Mandley, former World Cup winner. Werner Muff and Pierre Schwitzer, again two men that jump an awful lot of clear rounds. Now, what about the representatives from Furacea? Saudi Arabia, bronze medal Olympic Games, I mean, they, they must have a good chance. Third in London last year, you know, they've got four absolutely world-class horses, but boy, do they ride them well. You know, those four men can ride, and, and they'll be a, a threat to everybody. They don't go around the world jumping for money and burning their horses out. They keep them fresh for the big occasions, and they could really make their mark here in Barcelona this weekend. It will be very interesting. They'll jump in for their own money to a, to a great extent. That that's, that's doesn't really matter. Um, not, a, not a point, but I mean, they will be a threat. So with three days, they, obviously tomorrow is absolutely critical to get the top eight teams if you want to be in that grand finale on Sunday. But there's, now, there's more tactics with five riders. They can choose horses. They can swap riders. That, to you as a rider, Steve, from the, you know, that's obviously changed from the days you were riding, that adds another excitement for the crowd, doesn't it? Element. It, it's a very... It does, system. really, you know, and it's with only jumping one round as opposed to two in the Nations Cup, you know, there's a little bit more sudden death about it than, than there has been in the past with the old tried and tested. Nothing wrong with the Nations Cup series over the years. Three scores to count and four horses in each, you know, or add the two scores together. We all know that. 
this is a bit different, but it would let in a lot of other teams that have burst in with talent and could spring a surprise on the day. Teams such as Brazil, they won in Arezzo. Okay, it's it's Group Three, not in Group One, but they won it very, very well indeed. Canada, you never know what the Canadians are going to do. Uh, the Ukraine, they've got five world-class riders and very good horses indeed. And Sweden, they can pop up when you least expect it and win a medal. And they've done it in Olympic Games for many, many years. So you know there would be at least eight or ten teams here that would have a real chance of rocking the boat here this weekend. Another interesting aspect that's been brought in for the first time that I've seen, part of that two million pound pot is a very sneaky, lovely 200,000 euros. It's another innovation again, yeah. isn't it? You know, anybody that jumps a clear round or a double clear round is going to get a share, an equal share of 200,000 euros. So, you know, again, it's something new. It's something we'd look forward to seeing work. Um, and it'll be a great incentive for the riders. They'll be trying doubly hard. Now, you were here 21 years ago working at the Olympic Games in this very stadium. Is yeah. It's still as beautiful, all set for a great weekend, isn't it? Nothing's changed. <laughs> I think this will be every bit as good, really. You know, the Olympics was great here. It always is. There's a wonderful atmosphere in this great arena. Um, but I think this really, a new, a new event, fortune of money, everybody really up for it, all to play for. Don't miss it. And all the top teams in the world here this weekend that could be here. So we go live tomorrow for the first of the three days of competition. All 18 teams come forward, as we have said. We go live at 14.25 Central European Summer Time, live here on FEI TV. So the big question will, can Great Britain continue their winning streak? Can the Netherlands repeat what they did here 21 years ago and take gold in this stadium again? Who knows? We don't. But you watch us and find out.